last night at Harlem Hospital and NAACP, just to give you an example of the kinds of service we will continue doing. Uh, April is Financial Literacy Month, so we want to make sure that we focus on that and share with you uh, the new opportunities for collaboration and partnership. Uh, next slide, please. So essentially, uh, we want to let you know that we're here to help. Uh, we hope that you will consider us and those of you in the community will consider us as one of your premier financial institutions. Uh, we believe in connecting our members. Um, we, we don't talk about uh, members as being customers, which you'll hear us talking about the differences between credit unions and banks. Um, we love talking about our heroes. Uh, today, I know we have NYPD with us. We consider NYPD, our healthcare workers, even community board members and municipal employees, our heroes. Uh, we are continuing to be dedicated to health and well being of our communities, especially financial health. And we are strategically partnering with organizations all across New York City. We know that financial empowerment is not just limited to you know, one area of the city. So our focus is going from one extreme, alleviating poverty, to the other extreme of wealth building and creating generational wealth. But we also know the climate that we're in uh, requires that we focus on racial economic equity. Okay, next slide, please. We are also going to share with you that we're the oldest credit union. In case you didn't know, we've been here since 1916, for those who haven't known that. And we're going to continue um, servicing you with our new CEO. We have a new CEO that just came into office a year ago and developed a strategic plan, which is moving us forward. Next slide. Um, for those of you who don't know the real specifics about credit unions, um, I'm going to have Deborah talk about this and some of the differences, uh, especially as it relates to how we deal with profits. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having us. Uh, this is my first time here at uh, City College, so uh, it's beautiful. And I got lucky on finding the uh, building as quickly as I did. I thought <laughs> I'd be just roaming around endlessly. <laughs> so uh, for those of you who are familiar with MCU, is everyone here familiar with MCU? Yeah. So um, MCU is a credit union. And when I first started working at MCU, or actually right before I started working, I didn't really know what the difference was between a credit union and a commercial bank. Why would you need both? Either you have one or you have the other. However, I found out I was very, very wrong. There are many reasons that a credit union is important. Not to say that commercial banks are not. They're accessible. They're on every street corner easy access, right? But they don't offer some of the some of the things that a credit union can offer. First, we are not for profit. So and the profits that we have we make are returned back to our members. That's how we keep fees down and how we keep interest rates down. Now if everyone's listening to what's going on constantly, Federal Reserve raising interest rates, so that means lending is getting more expensive. We are doing our best to keep that down as much as we can. And we are able to do that because we are not for profit. We call the people that have accounts, our heroes, they're our members, not just customers, members. We like to think that that creates more of a one-on-one -on -one relationship with people. Our department goes out into the community, into organizations to talk with people, tell them what we can do for them and how we can help them. Our fees are lower. Um, about a year ago, we had, I want to say two years ago, our fees were $15 if you didn't meet the minimum balance requirement. Our new CEO came in and he said, we have to stop this fees. We have to help our members. He lowered it then to $9. We are now at no fees. Wow. So there is no minimum balance requirement and no fees for the account. When you open the account, you are not required to make a deposit either. So it's very easy to start the account. So um, we are able to, these are some of the things credit unions can do that commercial banks can't do. So we want to be able to help our members uh, by keeping our interest rates low and offering them all the same products and services that you find at a commercial bank. Online banking, bill pay, mobile deposit, apps, uh, and accounts from savings accounts up to mortgages. So we have it all, and with, we're ready to help everyone. Yep. So I started off by saying April is National Financial Literacy Month. We're just connecting the dots. Most of you understand what it means in this climate to be focused on finances, but a lot of us, we don't get all of the nuts and bolts until we're into adulthood, right? So our focus is really planning 
intricacies for young people who are, you know, intergenerational, whether it's in um, lower grades, it's in high school, it's in college, right, because we have savings programs that are aligned to that, but also our adults and our seniors who are still navigating all the new technology in order to gain access to their wealth. So you'll see on the slide, you can look at it at your leisure, a focus on health and how personal finances have been linked to uh, stressors, right? So if you are dealing with finances, we know what that means. It means, you know, strokes. It means the potential for, you know, uh, feeling like you're not able to provide stability for your family. We know that it means in terms of retirement, you know, challenges if you don't have access to all of the services and products that you need. And so these are some of the, the things that we are trying to lift up to make sure that people are aware of them. Next slide, please. Um, given the, the time, we know that we don't want to go into great depth today because there are many things on the agenda. But Deborah started talking to you about some of the products and services which you see listed here, which is the savings, the checking accounts, auto loans. Um, if you want to go deeper with us, there are interest rates that we can tell you for each category, what would be a benefit to you all, um, home equity and mortgages, we're doing some really unique and special things. Um, you heard maybe we talked earlier about uniform loans, uh, which we do for uniform workers, just like our NYPD and FDNY. Uh, we're also at all of the uh, city agencies right now. So not just community boards, but you know, administration for children's services, HRA, we're at HBD, we're at, you know, all of the agencies doing on-site visits. We also continue to do engagement through other means, sponsorship. I mentioned to Officer Urena earlier that we used to do the backpack drive with you all. We used to also do uh, turkey drives with you all. That's the kind of thing that MCU is still committed to. And so let us know. I know Joyce, we used to do all of the multicultural festivals together, right? There's many things that we can do together. So please continue to think about us. Events, outreach, we'll continue those partnerships. And you can see on the next slide very briefly, just a taste of some of the kinds of things that we have been doing uh, coming up. Uh, Deb and I are sponsoring Nurses Week. So we'll be at all of the hospitals with uh, giving lunch and different opportunities to serve that community. You see us there at the police academy. You see us um, at a backpack giveaway. You see us at the Albany Caucus or with UFP, UF Federation of Teachers, and community-based organizations, you name it. The NYPD Slave Drive, Slave Ride, um, National Night Out, right? These are things we used to participate in in my prior capacity that MCU is still doing and we're taking it to the next level. All right. Um, so just because we said we would be brief, just want to make sure you have our contact information. Um, we have a community email, community at nymcu.org, a phone number that's here, 212-238-3300. And Deb, if there's anything else that you missed that you'd like to add, we know that time is of the essence, but please, if there's anything else that I may have missed. I think you covered it all. Okay. Okay, so yes, I know there was five minutes for questions. Yes. So if there are any questions. Can I just make a little suggestion. Um, the courthouses have, you know, Department of Corrections, yes. clerks, and lawyers, judges, yes. everybody. Um, I don't know if maybe you guys could work with some of the people, particularly in the Bronx, where we have the two courthouses yes. close together in Manhattan. We would yes, love benefit to hear. from. Yeah, absolutely. We are engaging all of the city agencies, literally the first thing I did when I came to the office was send out letters to all the commissioners and all the heads of agencies. Uh, so yes, we're going to that. reach out to the unions too. Okay. We were just there uh, last night before last, the Central um, Labor Council is an umbrella for all the unions. Right, right. Um, and I was there with the president and we were talking about what we can do for each of them. Okay, um, so it's over time, right? I understand. I'm <laughs> but leave no stone unturned. And I appreciate you offering that. I want to say briefly that we also are refreshing our branches. So we have a Staten Island mm -hmm. ribbon cutting coming up because we just redid that branch. We changed the Lafayette branch that used to be across from one center street where the municipal building is. We moved it one block up to right across from City Hall where the Chase used to be. It's a nice, bright, open, clean 
on Chamber okay. Street. Okay. On Chamber okay. Street. Okay. Um, and we have the Harlem branch um, as one of the next that are about to be um, refreshed and, and um, upgraded. Yeah, the one on Cortland is actually where our office is. Are you talking about the, the one um, in, in the Bronx? Right. The Bronx, the Bronx I'm sorry. We just finished um, changing, first of all, leadership at that branch. Um, okay. And as soon as we finish sort of revamping and restructuring, I'm sure that that will be on our list. And we have a co op city uh, one as well, which you're familiar with, right? Uh, so thank you. I have a block association. Yes. I have a garden group. Yes. Uh, are these places I can send to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I heard something about no fees. Yes. Because I have an account that charges me a fee and it just, it's a waste of money. I uh, know. So can we email yes. with that email yes. or a different email? No, this email or my email amore at nymcu.org. Okay. And I have other people asking about this. Too. We're not 501c3s, mind you. We have like we're incorporated. Yeah, we, we don't do accounts. Yes, we I don't do we do don't do business right. accounts, right? But we do yeah. personal and we do come to any community because we know that <laughs> even if you are not directly a municipal employee, you may have a family member who is. Or you may just be a part of a nonprofit organization and we do service them as well. Uh, you might be someone who is, like I said, in any of these sectors. Um, so we're trying to come everywhere and we're trying to do NYCHA. I just went to NYCHA recently. Uh, you know, I'm not leaving anybody out because I know the reality for our community. You know, we're talking about low income, we're talking about moderate income, we're talking about those who have needs. Right, every part of the spectrum is is here to be serviced. So we have be two here. questions online. Yep, please. Mm -hmm. Um, Arellos, Arellos, Mejias. Yes, I just yes, I just wanted to know why don't they provide Zell services? Oh, no. so, 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 please, please, come, come. It's yeah. one of the newest initiatives that we launched under the new CEO. Um, and I mentioned earlier that the new CEO just got there in this past year, and um, we actually communicated out to the public that Zell is right here. Okay, so it's one of those things that's been on the list prior to us coming. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, Thank you. You're Walter Alexander, have your hand up. Uh, yes, you said it was a Harlem branch. Are you talking about the one on one two four of uh, one two four and Saint Nicholas? That's right. Correct. That's about to be uh, revamped. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's a, it's a, the line for services is very long in there a lot a lot of times, but it's it's great to have it there though. Yes, mm -hmm. no, we we appreciate that. And one of the things that we talked about is how do we reduce service time? How do we um, strengthen customer service and community engagement? You know, it's part of why this new team is here doing what we're doing to make us more accessible. Uh, we're going out and actually facilitating surveys right now in some of our sectors just to get more of that input. We also have a contact center, which we know we've heard the gamut, the good stuff and the bad stuff in terms of what could be, um, uh, how, how we can become more efficient, right? And so that is being worked on. This new strategic plan I talked about has a bunch of um, opportunities for us to revamp and, and upgrade. So you'll be hearing more. Uh, and keep giving the feedback. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, one last question, Carolyn Thompson. Hi, Athena. Hi, Carolyn. How are you? Good. I wanted to know, what does Zell do? <laughs> Zell is, uh, if you're a member of other banks like me, I actually share the space of having both a Chase account and a MCU account. Uh, Unfortunately, Chase has never given me a loan or a product that I think I can benefit from right now. So that's why I'm even more committed to MCU right now. Um, but um, Zelle allows you to transfer money and, and make payments online uh, through your account. Um, and so all, although we have online banking, we didn't necessarily have that mechanism. And a lot of people are using that mechanism right now to do their additional online and, and bill, pay, and transfer services. And Carolyn, it triggers us right. yeah. immediately. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. I, I can go to my bank website and send you $100 now. Right. Like immediately. Okay. I use it all the time. So I, I was going to say, Monica, I'll give you my information. <laughs> I use it all the time. My daughter says, Ma, I need 
Five dollars right now, like right. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you. I got the message. Okay. Already. Um, seeing that we do have a quorum, I'm going to call the meeting to order at six fifty-seven. Yes. Um, um, Ted, on. Go for it. Ted or Solomon, could either of you take the roll call? Solomon, can you unmute yourself? Yes. How are you, Yusa? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Just give me one second to bring up the roll call sheet. Okay, uh, I will take the roll call. Um, I'm going to start off with Joyce Adewume. Yeah. She's here and present. Thank you. Walter Alexander. Aki. Jane <laughs> Arundel Johnson. Present. Okay, I have Miriam, I have as excused. Uh, Deidre McIntosh Brown. Deidre. Okay. Uh, Patricia Caldwell. Present. Thank you. Dan Cohen. Present. Juan Colmenares. Juan Colmenares. I'll come back. Carlton Davis. Can you hear me? I hear you. Hear you. Gotcha, Carlton. Thank you. Okay. Monica Dula. Thank you. Maretta Dunn. Yeah. Victor Edwards, I know, is there. Sean Farrow. Sean Maretta's Farrow. Maretta's here in person. I, 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 I heard her. Yes, I got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Sean Farrow. Hugo Torres Fetzko. Hugo Torres Fetzko. Present. Thank you. Lydia Gerson. Lydia Gerson. Lydia. All right, I have John Martin Green as excused. David Hansel. David Hansel. Uh, sorry, David Hansel is um, at, at a meeting, but he's actually, jo he's joining shortly over Zoom. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's in the Zoom, I saw him here earlier. Okay, uh, Daria Hardiman. Here. Thank you. Uh, I saw Monique Harden Cordero there. Uh, Laquita Henry. Laquita Henry. Here. I'm here. Thank you. Alex Hunter. Alex Hunter. Okay, next, Heather Jason. Heather Jason. Thank you. Uh, Derek Johnson. Derek Johnson. Derek. Come back, Pat Watler Johnson. I'm here, present. Thank, thank you. Uh, I, I heard Tiffany Khan, so she's present. I believe Ted is trying to join the Zoom. Yes, can I speak up? Ted, is, is, has, has, he's not been able to log on. He got the panelist email, the general link mail, and every time he's trying to log on, he's not able to get there. So um, he, he's going to take your suggestion and restart the computer. He's in now, uh, Pat. He's in. I, I, oh, he's in. Yes. I'm making oh. you wire. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. So you could talk for yourself, Ted. Yeah. Well, thank you. And Thank you all for your help. I don't know what I did that made it work, but it seems to be working. No problem, Ted. All right. Uh, next, I have uh, Tina Lumley. Yes, Juan. I, I'm I, sorry I, to bother you. I'm here. No problem. Okay, got you. Thank Bye. you, sir. All right. Uh, Tina Lumley. Is Tina Lumley here? Yes, here. Thank you, Tina. Areles Mejia. Areles Mejia. Yeah. Here. Thank you. Ken Miles. Ken Miles. Ken Miles. Okay, I'll move on. Signe Mortensen. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Michael Palma. Michael Palma. Carolina Ramirez. Carolina Ramirez. Patricia Ramos. Patricia Ramos. 
I'm here. Thank you. Jonathan Synagog. Jonathan Jonathan Synagog. Reverend Morgan Thomas. Reverend Morgan Thomas. Thank you, Alex. I saw you. You're present. I'm thank here. you. Okay, I got you, uh, Reverend. Thank you, Jonathan Thomas. Is Jonathan Thomas on? Okay, I'm going to move on. I, I know Carolyn Thompson is on. Edwin Torres is Edwin Torres on? That's me. Thank you, sir. Liz Waitakis. Liz Waitakis. I am here. Thank you, Liz. Uh, I know Barry is going to come late, and uh, the last person I have is Shanika Wilson. Shanika Wilson. I'm here. Okay, thank you, Shanika. Is there anyone I may have missed? Uh, or did maybe you, this is got, David. This is David Hans. Get me because I was I was just leaving. A, I, uh, I I got you, David. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Tiffany, thank you. Tiffany, let us know that you are on. Oh, thank you so much. Yep. And um, and I got and I got Alex. Okay, good. Yes, this is uh, Derek Johnson. I'm in. I was in the uh, the other chat, ah, not okay. as a panelist. So I'm here Understood. not as a panelist. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. I, uh, I have have you noted now. Okay. Um, so I have uh, 30 members in attendance. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Would you have a quorum? We can get started. Motion to adopt the agenda will be in order at this time. No move. Second. Ed. Second. With the amendment for the presentation from MCU, that was not on the original agenda. So that will be added for the record. Um, just a quick question. In terms of the action items, the Cannabis Task Force needs to make an amendment. Okay. okay. Small. Okay, so you want to amend the document that we have in the packet? It's not for being presented for um, for acceptance as much as it was F F FYI. We have to work on that document and we'd like to present it next month. So, so there's this document in the packet. So when it comes up, you just make that announcement. Okay. okay. Um, Sorry. Um, Minutes, a motion to adopt the minutes. So moved. Any sorry, correction? So moved. Second. So moved by Alan Thompson, second by Walter Alexander. Great, thank you. Moving on, Chair's not here for his report, so we'll jump right to the Treasury's report, Alan Thompson. Uh, Vic, Victor, I'm sorry yes. to interrupt you. Um, no I'd, I'd like, uh, I, I'm just monitoring the Q&A. And uh, yeah. we have some people asking to be heard during public session. Um, the first person I have is uh, Miss Natalie Smith. Okay. And then we also have a Miss Sarah Williams. Okay. And 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 the and the third person is. Um, they're it's a group of people they're going by the name todos nosotros todos nosotros i can it's a it's a group of residents okay and thank you Victor, thank you vice chair forgive me for um interrupting as well um looking and i just want to make sure that the arts and culture letter of support is there because i don't see it it's there, the one San Diego. Yeah. It I is there. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. The Harlem Walk of Honor, correct? Yes, thank you. Yes. All righty. Um, getting back to Treasurer's report, Ms. Carolyn Thompson. No changes in the report. No changes. Okay. I'd just like to add a little to the Treasurer's report to encourage the committees to submit their uh, proposals for funding for various events. <laughs> uh, the deadline uh, is next month. I don't have the exact date. I will consult with the chair, but I just wanna give you a reminder that you should submit your, your proposals ASAP. And that's for discretionary funding 
FY23. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Just to follow up on that, we have a senior resource fair coming up May 2nd. At my meeting this past week, I encouraged people to think about doing other resource fair, whether it be health, youth services, whatever it might be, to the community economic development as well. We have funds for that to kind of get the word out to the community. So let's use the monies we have. All right. Um, district manager's report. Good evening, all. In addition to my report, I have a few announcements and um, highlights I'd like to share with you. The first being in the spirit of Earth Day, DOT would like to invite you all to join them this Saturday, the 22nd from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, as DOT puts together their annual car-free event. The car-free Earth Day converts select streets, open streets and plazas throughout the five boroughs into a car-free streets for pedestrians, cyclists and local businesses. The Manhattan locations are as follows. Broadway, East 17th Street to West 42nd Street, Dykeman Street, Seaman Avenue to Dykeman Marina, St. Nicholas Avenue, 181st to 190th. I'll put these locations in the chat. Flyers are on the table, and I will leave uh, the other information, as I stated, in the chat for the folks that are remote. Also, the National Park Service, NPS, is celebrating the 201st birthday for President uh, Ulysses Grant. Please join the National Park Service on the plaza in front of the mausoleum for a military honor guard ceremony from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Reception and refreshments immediately following on the plaza from 12 to 12.30. Uh, you can RSVP by email at G-E-G-R underscore info at NPS.gov or by calling 646 670-7251. The deadline to register is Wednesday, April the 26th. Flyers have also been e-blasted and further information will be left in the chat. The New York City Department of Sanitation has announced its spring 2023 safe disposal, solvents, automotive flammables, electronics, uh, the event schedule, this event provides city residents with an easy way to safely dispose of potentially harmful household products, such as pesticides, strong cleaners, mercury containing devices, paints, automotive fluids, and medications. The Manhattan event will be held on Sunday, June 11th at Columbia University Teachers College. That's 120 West 100, I'm sorry, West 120th Street between Broadway and Amsterdam Avenue. Uh, they have a vehicle entrance accessible from the Seminary Road to Amsterdam Avenue. Pedestrian walk in area is also available. The New York City Parks is hiring for the summer. If you or anyone you know is interested in helping to keep our NYC green spaces beautiful and safe, uh, the Parks Department is offering a range of seasonal opportunities, including positions in maintenance, security, and recreation. Uh, you can visit their website. I'll leave that information in the chat. Uh, for those present, it's uh, www.nyc.gov forward slash parks for further information and to apply. New York State Senator Cordell Clare is hosting her inauguration swearing in ceremony this Sunday, the 23rd from three to 6 p.m. at Waldley School for the Performing Arts and Visual Arts Auditorium at 215 West 114th Street. For further information and to RSVP, please call the Senator's office at 212-222-7315 or send an email to Anthony Gray at agray at Senate nysenate.gov. Flyers will also be left at the table, the information table, and I will put this contact information in the chat. Last but not least, alternate side street parking will be suspended tomorrow, April the 21st through Sunday, April the 23rd, in celebration, excuse my pronunciation, I've been practicing, El Fatar, the ending of Ramadan. So I'd like to wish all that are, are practicing uh, a healthy and um, safe celebration. Thank you, and that concludes my report if you have any questions. And before I leave, 
I'd like to introduce our new staff member, Haikil Ellison. Haikil started with us on um, Monday, April 3rd, and he hit, he hit the ground running. We, we, he's been working with us on the senior resource fair, handling complaints, just filling in like he was always in the office. So I just want to thank him for joining my team. Thank you. Bravo. Woohoo. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I saw the emails. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Hey. Uh, next report we'll hear from Ms. Pat Watler Johnson. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here to present the um as a representative of WHTC. Um rep, I'm sorry, the WHTC representative report. Um, the board meeting took place on April 5th um via Zoom. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend um for personal reasons, but um I understand that there was a lot discussed. You know, there was a chair's report, um, um, information about the HDFC Resource Center and as well as other information. Um the next board meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, May 17th. Um, the board chairman, um, Milton Tingling, was recognized by City and State Magazine for the 2023 Law Power 100. Um, the link could be accessed from the report here. Uh, the Uptown Night Market took place again for the 2023 season. Um, it began on Thursday, April 13th. And um, I thought I remember it mentioning that Yutha and, and the staff went. Yutha, did you all go? Yes, we did. And How it was, was it? It was my estimation. It was too crowded. Okay. We really, um, we got lost and we entered together, but we didn't leave together. It was really crowded. The food, like the food was good, by the way, uh -huh. but the lines were long and they were vendors on opposite sides. So the lines kind of interjected. So there were um, a few discrepancies, but nothing major, mm -hmm. but my guess was it was pretty peaceful. My mm -hmm. guess was that it was, it was crowded. Okay. Okay. Um, because that took place on April 13th. They did have, they did have security when you entered, um, they didn't check bags or anything. They were just basically letting people in. I'm looking at them. I don't know if they had, um, a sixth sense or what, but <laughs> that's what they did. They didn't pat anyone down. They didn't check bags. They were just no, watching people as they were entering. Okay. Okay. Pat, follow up on you, that. You saw, I you saw in it. The past that uh, the crowds have thinned out as time went on. Sometimes the initial ones, you get a large <laughs> crowd and they kind of thin out. I went several times uh, last year. Okay. And I would attribute it to the weather because that was a great day. Oh, the well, weather was yeah. fantastic and on the that first day. one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And being the first one. Okay. All right, so there'll be other events. The remaining events for, will be on the second Thursday of every month from April through Oct October 2023. Um, you can go to the website for more information. Um, WHTC co-sponsored Jazz on Tap at Aaron Davis Hall um, with the um, multi-talented Mr. Omar Edwards, um, who's, uh, as he's described, foot music has taken him to over 20 countries and on countless American stages, <laughs> including um, on on Broadway. He was in Bringing the Noise, Bringing the Funk. Um, also, um, WHTC is a co-sponsor of the City College Center for the Arts presentation of the Limon Dance Company, um, Dance Now Miami, at Aaron Davis Hall on Wednesday, May 3rd at 7 and Saturday, May 6th from 1 to Set at, at one at one and seven p.m. Um, also, I did indicate in the report. I wanted to mention if there's any information, like community events or anything that you see in here. If you want more information, please go to the WHTC website. Um, and you could also uh, it's at www.westharlemdc.org. And if you go to the website and click on the right side, um, there's like links to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, so there's a lot of information out there. Just to let you know that if you want that information you could always find it um is there are there any questions um i have a question for you Tha. yes um you said you were gonna put the information for the senator cordell's uh ceremony i want to go to it i don't know what to do to go it's well, it'll be do you have any questions about my report mr coleman Norris? yeah no. I'm sorry, I was trying to ask before you started, but I couldn't get to it. Sorry about that. Okay. So it will be shared in the, the chat, Juan, and if you don't have it, please don't hesitate to contact me tomorrow, even if you need further information. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you, you uh, mm -hmm. Pat. Appreciate mm -hmm. the report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, moving on, we are at UMES. Um, Reverend George Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. I thought you were here first. Reverend Thomas. Yeah. He's muted. Oh, Daria has our hand up. I don't know what. I don't know if it's a question. Sorry, that's a legacy hand. Is the Reverend on? Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, Ken Miles, the 125th Street bid. Ken Miles, are you on? Okay. All right. Okay, um, I'm unmuted. I don't know. I was I unmuted myself quite a while ago to make sure I didn't have that problem. Um, okay. So, I think, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Reverend. Good evening. You're on. You're muted again. You muted. Rev, you're muted again. Reverend, you're muted. We can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, this uh, this I don't know what's going on here. Okay. Let me start over again. <laughs> okay. Um. So I'm I'm really really excited and pleased to share that UMass was awarded one point thirty five million dollars from the CDFI. That's the Community Development Financial Institute. And it's for the fund's um, equitable recovery plan. And this um, program is very competitive. Um, there were in total across the country, there was $1.7 billion in grants given out to 603 community development funds. And there are actually about 1,400 community development funds across the nation. The applicants from across the nation requested more than four times what was available for funding. So UMass's um, expertise in writing fabulous um, grants and putting down all the necessary information and um, really advocating for our community um, paid off again. Uh, we were honored uh, to be a part of the select group um, that will be able to provide capital to our community. And, and this money is for especially communities that were hard hit by the pandemic. We know that we suffered greatly. And the proposal that UMass put forth that garnered uh, such an uh, award was that UMass highlighted that we were strengthening two business segments uh, based on the outreach that had been going on and the meetings that UMass have been holding. And those two areas were the emerging real estate developers of color, which um, real estate developers in the past had not been getting grants from UMass. And also the, the one that I was most excited about was the child care providers. Because one of the things we learned since COVID is that we really have a dress in terms of child care services so that women can get back to work and fathers can get back to work and not have to worry about or pay all the money that they earn for child care. And so there are other types of businesses, our, our traditional arts programs and small businesses that will be eligible to receive funding from these proceeds also. But there will be um, a good deal of focus on creating uh, groups. And if you know individuals who are doing um, child care on a small basis, this might be a time for them to look at developing um, their child care um, service and, and business. Um, this is the second time that UMass has received a grant 
um, through the community development fund. And so we're excited because it supports all the efforts that UMass puts forth to give out additional capital and to deploy that capital within our community board and within our other community boards as well. And the, uh, the notice of the award came at just a really uh, empowering time because the board has been talking strategically and, and has just developed a strategic planning committee in order to begin to develop um, plans that will reflect the community business needs even more. And so this is an awesome time because once those uh, needs are identified and strategies are developed, we will be in a position to do funding for many of our small businesses. Continuing uh, also, of course, is, our, is the workforce program and um, individuals should, should go to the UMES website to sign up for workforce training and, um, and also to sign up for micro loans and um, small business loans. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, Good evening. Thank you so much. Very comprehensive report. Thank you. Um, next up is Ken Miles. Is he on from 125th Street Bid Report? Solomon, I don't have a question now next to Ken. So. Solomon, did we record Ken Miles as being present this evening? No, no. Okay, we'll move forward. Um, next is the Manhattan Borough President's Office reporting from Mina White, I believe. Is Mark joining us, Mina? No, he won't be on. So you have me. <laughs> and that's perfect. Uh, that thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I do just want to shout out Athena Moore, former MVPO, a director of Northern Manhattan office previously. So thank you for that uh, presentation since it is Financial Wellness Month. Um, so that was definitely appreciated, very informational. Um, again, Mina White, community liaison for Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine, um, bring greetings and brief remarks on his behalf. Uh, one, I do just wanna congratulate the board on their cannabis symposium that happened earlier this week um, at Columbia's forum uh, that was very successful. Um, I know the Borough President was a speaker there and of course was joined by Deputy Borough President Keisha Sun James. Um, our office is of course very supportive of legal um, cannabis stores and um, definitely want to make sure, especially card applicants, and we want to make sure that that information is getting out there. So uh, we're super happy when uh, community boards are taking the initiative to educate the community, particularly in communities that have been um, harmed. And I know that Community Board 10 will also be having their cannabis event later on um, this month. And I also do want to say that the president did join uh, last week, uh, the, Jack, the second annual Jackie Robinson uh, park uh, annual opening event and so that was really great as well as Harlem Middle League's opening event um, so that was just beautiful and I know so many of you all uh, that was a really great day beautiful weather that we're getting so far crossing fingers and um, also uh, our office was also very excited to hear about the announcement of the new rat czar um, represent and that announcement was made in Harlem at St. Nicholas Park. Um, the Borough President was trying his best to get there. He was shooting from East Harlem, but couldn't make it in time, but I was present. So it was really exciting to um, hear about um, Zar Karate and um, all the efforts that the city is putting in, um, particularly in Harlem as a whole, uh, West Harlem, Central Harlem, and East Harlem, and investing uh, 3.5 million into not only those Manhattan communities, also I know, I believe East Village area, Brooklyn, as well as in the Bronx, um, and those community boards, as you know, the borough president was also very instrumental in helping to pass um, the historic uh, uh, packet of rat legislation bills last year. So when it, alongside council member Abreu, so when we're talking about particularly, you know, just tamping down on the rat populations, um, particularly, you know, when we have new buildings coming up, you know, it's crazy to find out that we actually never mandated uh, developers to actually uh, hire pest control uh, companies. So fortunately, that is um, something that the city has now put in place uh, with um, 
with all those legislative powers, member of presidents push as well. Um, just one brief announcement that has recently come out of our office is a continuation of housing, the Housing Manhattanites report that came out at the end of January. So as you know, the borough president um, identified multiple sites uh, throughout all 12 community boards in Manhattan um, that could be possible and potential housing development sites. Uh, there were two sites identified in Manhattan Community Board 9, um, in addition to um, identifying uh, rezoning opportunities in West Harlem. And so this, uh, this tool that is now on our website, and I'll put that link in the chat, um, is really just asking for your input on the ground. So if you keep walking by this lot and you're like, I don't know who owns this, but this would be a really great housing development. Uh, we want to know about it and we want you to um, inform our office. So that's an online tool that's live and ready to go on our website. I'll put that information in the chat. Um, and I also do just want to briefly announce that we are in the thick and the last final stretch of our community board interviews. So I know I've seen some of you earlier today, uh, earlier on in the week, um, regarding the community board interviews uh, for those who are up for reappointment. Um, the next dates that we have are Saturday at 10 a.m and also Sunday at 4 p.m. Um, if you have not yet interviewed and you are up for reappointment. So that's it for me. Uh, that concludes my report. Um, if there's any questions, we'll take them. Any questions for the borough president's office? I got one saying that. Yeah. yeah, it's me. Um, Hi, I just wanna go on the record, uh, Ms. White, that I appreciate all your efforts and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the help you have given me. And I hope um, you feel as good as I feel when people thank you. Um, I teach 150 kids every day. And when one of them says thank you, Mr. Comunares, it blows my mind. Um, so I thank you. And I also want to ask you, uh, if you walk on 147th, uh, between 147 and 148, there's that big empty park. Uh, it used to be a church. And now it's a big hole. Um, do you know what I'm referring to? Charles um, Memorial. Charles Memorial. Yeah, we're well aware. <laughs> we're, we're working on that one. Um, oh, okay. housing, our housing committee can fill you in. Sydney Mortensen can give you. He's on our committee. We can talk to him. Beautiful. Okay. You can give you an update uh, be, on that. Because me not with site. Exactly. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. Bye-bye. That's great. So yeah, we'll talk, definitely talk online and thank you for the thank yous. So we'll be following up. We've got multiple, multiple city agencies on debt. Um, so looking forward to the outcome and response on that. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mina. Appreciate your Thanks, update. Thanks everyone. Thank you for the work. Also Juan, thank you for your work at A. Philip Randolph. I take my hat off having worked the Board of Ed myself, knowing what that's like, thank you. Yes, um, on the screen, you'll see pictures of the cannabis symposium we had recently at the forum. Um, I attended and stood proudly there and watched two of our board members, M Squared, which is Monique and Miriam, <laughs> help lead that with Happy Monkey. And um, Congressman Espayat spoke, Mark Levine spoke, the borough president. Our council member Sean Abreu spoke as well. And um, I only stayed for half, but it was quite informative and quite a great turnout. Um, equity in this uh, market is essential. I see a lot of places going up and um, I don't know how many uh, people from the community or people have been justice involved, which the first license is supposed to be um, given to. So thank you once again. Thank Monique. you. And Mary was out of town at the moment. She is. My ad, happy 420 day, because this is the day we would have probably done the event if it had worked out. But um, it was a good event, if I must say so myself, and there will be more events to come to continue educating the community regarding the opportunities, the medicinal opportunities associated with cannabis, as well as the business and ancillary opportunities. So more to come. Great, thank you. Thank you. All righty, next on the agenda is our nominating committee led by Ms. Laquita Henry. 
Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, and hello, everyone. Good evening. While I am doing just a uh, two second introduction, Yuthu, uh, can you make Tiffany Khan uh, a co host uh, so that we can share our PowerPoint presentation? Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Our Thank committee you. Uh, consists of <laughs> Tiffany Khan. Tina Lumley, Ken mm -hmm. Miles, and Annette Robinson. We have all been diligently working and in a caring way, trying to do the best we can uh, in light of uh, future leadership of the board. Um, we've been working as, as you'll see from uh, the packet and in every packet since March, a brief discussion, um, a description rather, of our officers and the responsibilities, uh, the intent to run form and the timeline. And you'll hear make, uh, us make reference to that several times this evening. Um, you've gotten to know a lot of the names I just mentioned through telephone calls made to you uh, in submission of the survey. Uh, which we will give results for this evening. Uh, prior to that, again, I want to thank our um, board members, um, Signe Morgan's Mortenson and um, a former board member, Anita Chang, for their help because we all work together uh, on various aspects of the elections committee in 2021, which we are imp have implemented this year. Um, we are on schedule and on track with our timeline and, you know, getting ready for elections night. And at this particular time, what Tip, Tina Lumley and Tiffany will do uh, is give you uh, some feedback on the survey that was conducted and for which uh, a great majority of you close to close to 90% participated. And we're very grateful. All right, take it away, Tina, Lumley, and Tiffany. Laquita, can I make a comment? This is Reverend yes. Morgan. Yes, I Reverend Morgan. I have my hand up, but but maybe I, I, you didn't see it. Um, I just wanted to say that you know, thank you all because um, given the today's climate um, and um, the way. I'm having to work. I really appreciated the opportunity to participate because Annette Robinson um, made sure she made more than one call to me and got me and I was able <laughs> to fill out the survey. So I just want to say thank you guys. You know, job well done. Uh, that's the kind of, um, you know, input that we need to make sure all of us get, you know, get represented and, and make sure that all of us participate in the process. So thank you. Absolutely. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Tina, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Take it away. Okay. In your packet, you'll see a PDF copy of the intent to run form and instructions the full, the full procedures for candidates and a brief job description of each of the officer's positions. Okay, now we're gonna go over the 30 of the survey results. 38 folks responded, which is quite, a, quite a, almost, a, we almost had 100%. Of the 38, 10 for, um, for served as officers currently or in the past and, and the other 28 did not. Um, for re the, regarding the questions, how long were you on the board before serving? It's usually three to four years. And how long have you lived in or worked in the community and CB9? All respondents were six years or, or more. And of course, that means the average is over six years as well. Um, this is the breakdown of the responses. Um, the main reasons why folks are not interested for people, I don't feel experienced enough, 25. Other commitments, five, takes too much time, and five, I don't know enough about the job. 
Okay, now here are the words of encouragement from for former board members that, excuse me, former folks that were um, on the executive committee. It deepens your involvement in community boards, lead an import on important issues, builds character, more rewarding than you would believe, satisfying to know you have committed and contributed to the community, bring community interest to fruition, and the best advice, just do it. Listen to all viewpoints before making a decision. Familiarize yourself with all parts of the board. Use the opportunity to improve how the board runs. Seek the advice of those who have done it before. Survey results, what's the most challenging from the prior executive committee, prior and current executive committee? Meant as everyone would know, many items to address, finding time to do everything you want to do, communication, taking minutes <laughs> during a long meeting. I think we can all identify with that. Balancing time and figuring out which of the endless things to prioritize on the board, what's most rewarding, improving and implementing ways to improve productivity during meetings, seeing a project to completion, saving West Harlem peers for CBA, people, meeting and working with people in the community. Now I'm going to turn it over to Tiffany. Good evening, everyone. So um, just a few things uh, sort of piggybacking off of some of the words of encouragement. Be the change that you want to see in your committee, right? Not just this committee, but within the community. So please, um, we need folks to, to run. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the feedback that we've received. Um, we have definitely taken those comments into consideration. We now have virtual voting on resolutions. So if you cannot make it, um, that possibility exists. Um, we've established officer meetings to discuss board operations and improvements. We now have a deeper understanding of a lot of the issues that people care about in the community. Um, we have a more well-documented process. Um, certain things online, for example, on Facebook, um, and you know, event creation through uh, through Zoom. So you can attend. Let's see, uh, and just um, as a reminder. Uh, you have your in your packet all of the documents that you need. Um, so you can, and, and also tomorrow, Laquita is going to email everyone this PDF, uh, this um, PowerPoint PDF. Um, you can submit online your intent to run form. Uh, if, you, if you cannot see, if you're using your phone right now and you cannot see the, the link, it's www.cb9 m.org slash intent hyphen to hyphen run. Again, Laquita will share this tomorrow. And finally, you can complete and email your uh, PDF to Yutha or Laquita. And don't forget, please, May 15th is the deadline for nominations. Um, May 18th will be nominations night. Candidates will be announced and verbal support from seven folks who must be present. Um, oh. And also nominations can be taken from the floor. So you can nominate folks right there from the floor, as long as you can get support from seven present board members. Um, and as a final reminder, your intent to run forms must be submitted by 4 p.m. on May 25th. Finally, uh, May 31st, it's actually not finally, this is the candidates night. All candidates must be at candidates night to present their statements and answer any questions from the board and the public. If a candidate is not president for, um, for a candidates night, the nominee forfeits his or her candidacy. So brief overview of the timeline, April 20th, we'll be having our general board meeting uh, to vote to temporarily amend the bylaws and encourage candidates to submit their intent to run forms, May 18th. <sighs>
I'll mute you that. About that. May 25th, again, at 4 p.m., your intent to run forms are due. May 31st, the candidates' night. And finally, June 15th will be the general board meeting uh, and elections for new office. Thank you, Tiffany and Tina. Um, terrific. Um, you, if, if you missed anything, uh, as Tiffany uh, referenced, I will get this um, PowerPoint presentation to youth uh, and the staff so that it can be uh, emailed to everyone on the board. Um, so tonight we, you know, have talked about um, the elections process. Uh, later in the evening, we're going to uh, vote on an amendment to the bylaws as we did in 2021 as well, uh, because we have a hybrid situation. Um, as Tiffany has encouraged candidates to submit their intent to run forms and, um, and we'll just keep moving forward and you'll be hearing from the elections committee. Uh, in reference to the bylaws, I want to particularly thank Mina White from the Manhattan Borough President's Office for working with us to make sure that the bylaws were um, presented as they should be presented. And you'll see that um, she enlisted the general counsel, Tommy Vest, and we had a, a meeting that uh, satisfied all the points and pretty much uh, nothing much changed from the 2021 when we had to have virtual voting. Uh, we will do a test run in uh, at the May meeting. So, um, you know, be alert for that. Um, but I want to thank uh, General Counsel Tommy Vest and Mina White for assisting. Are there any questions for the elections committee? None on this side. Do you have any on line? Okay. And I want to thank our um, mentor and counsel, Ted Kavalev, who uh, has been with us when he could on um, at each of our uh, Zoom meetings as well. So we have a really good committee and we're looking to present, uh, uh, you know, the slate to you guys uh, at our May meeting. So thank you again, everyone. Yep. Laquita, Carolyn Thompson has a question. Oh, okay. Laquita. Okay. Carolyn. Yeah, you know, my question that is not so much a question. I don't have to put you put he said the packet. It's not I, I, I will eat yeah, you may not have heard that. I will eat the, the PowerPoint presentation has everything and I will uh get it to the office uh tonight or in the morning so it could be emailed to everyone. But in tonight's packet uh that youth and the staff emailed out. There is uh, the intent to run form again. And then there's the uh, brief description of officers and responsibilities that's in the packet. That's what and I uh, yes, it's, it's in the packet. And um, then there's also the timeline that's in the packet. That's what I was saying, that is not in my packet. Well, we'll see to it that you get it if, it, if it's not. I have it in mine. Not in mine. It, the, the description it says it says we'll send it, but it's uh, um, brief and full. It has a label, brief and brief job description, and at the let's see, actually it says brief and full job descriptions of each officer. That's the label for the. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know, but I don't. Yeah. Have to. We'll okay. send you, Carolyn. Carolyn, we will. I'll send it to you myself. Thank you. Okay. All right. Moving Thank on. you. Sorry about that, Carol. Thank you so much for that. Um, next public session, we have quite a few public session speakers. Let me remind everyone, three minutes is the time limit. I don't want to be rude and cut you off, but I will. Three minutes. <laughs> three minutes is three minutes. We have quite a few people speaking. We just want to be fair to everybody. 
Okay. <laughs> yes, I will help Victor with the hook. Just say. like the Apollo. So here we go. The first person, Whitney Derridan. Is she here? Whitney? Okay, going once, going twice. What's her last name? Derridan. Derridan. Free events in West Harlem Pierce Park and Riverside Park is the subject that she was going to address. I don't see anyone online. Okay, moving, keeping, okay, moving along. Uh, next person. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait. I need to put one. Summer. 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 Is somebody on there? Yeah. Someone Hudson? Yeah. Okay. Oh, is that what it is? Hi there. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Sorry, I only had the webinar link, so. No problem. We're going to but, start. <laughs> yep. Um, I just wanted to say hello. My name is Whitney Dearden. I am the Director of Public Programming uh, at the Riverside Park Conservancy. So um, in addition to all the programs from 59th to 181st, um, part of Summer on the Hudson, of course, has a uh, fairly large contingent events in uh, West Harlem Piers. Uh, so I just wanted to say hello, say that our schedule is live. Um, usually I come in person and I bring some brochures, but you can find it at nyc.gov slash parks slash SOH. I'm going to put that in the chat. Um, and we do uh, all kinds of stuff, concerts, kids events, health and wellness programs, uh, dance performances, everything we do is free and fully open to the public. Uh, so we really hope to see you in West Harlem Piers with us this summer. All right. Um, I just want to add to that. We do have um, a Harlem Piers Committee, Economic Development and Harlem Piers Committee that meets monthly. You're more than welcome to um, join their committee to um, speak and let them know about the peers. We're very concerned with what's going on there. Make sure mm -hmm. it's being properly utilized. Great. Yes. Thank you so much. I did stop in at the uh, Parks and, and Landmarks Committee earlier this month, but wanted to say hello to the full board. And I'll leave my contact information in the chat as well. Um, yes, thank you, um, dear Whitney. Thank you. Thank you. Say it again. Okay. Let's be very clear. The West Harlem Pier does not have a park. It has a grassy area. The West Harlem Pier's park the money that Columbia put forward for it is they use the name West Harlem Pears Park, but it was really just for the West Harlem Pears. The Parks Department has nothing to do with the building, the secure, the involvement of any activity that occurs at the Pears. Only, only the Department of Economic Development. Okay. So that correction should be made in all books. I see that very recently, someone, don't know what organization, finally put up a big sign that said, West Harlem Pier. Does not use the word park well, at all. Gotcha. Does not mean that the local community and all other people do not have issues at that park area at the board uh, the players area that needs to be addressed i'll just name one a porta toilet you all go from there I'll you <laughs> thank you <laughs> miss Powell, you have a question yeah, well Comment. actually she addressed that question thank you very much i was wondering oh. because um I am in the Committee of Parks and Landmarks, and I was wondering, uh, did that, that Harlem Pier have anything to do with the parks? And as we see, it does not. So as long as that that uh, little snafu has been corrected, I have no issues with that situation. But thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, next speaker. One? Okay. Next speaker, New York African Chorus Ensemble. Okay. Our very own. Our very own. All right. I'm just saying, I'm not starting here. Oh, it's you. Yeah, that works. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Well, you can stand to the side because you're giving my staff a I'm battle. So sorry. Okay. How about this? Yeah. yeah okay. Now stop talking. Yeah. For this segment, my name is Joyce Adewumi, and I am the president of New York African Chorus Ensemble, the founder. One of the programs that we organize is the New York City Multicultural Festival. And we started this in 2010. 
It was founded by my organization in collaboration with the NYPD. Um, it was founded so that we could find a way, an artistic way of reducing hate crimes. As we know, this is a very culturally diverse community. So using this medium to reduce hate crimes as well as to foster better relationship between the community and the NYPD. So if you've ever attended, you see a lot of NYPD there, but they're not there. Well, they dance and they sing. So, you know, so, you know, they're not really there to frighten people. But anyway, um, I know that in the past, I've been told that I don't have to come to the board to get approval, you know, that it will be approved, but something has happened and I felt that it was very important for me to come to the board and talk about this. So in collaboration with the um, elected officials for the very first time, we are able to offer free registration to small businesses. Not only free registration at the festival, but also free furniture. Well, limited though, you know. Mm -hmm. So that means that if you come in and you register early as a small business, you don't have to pay for registration. You don't have to pay for chairs. You don't have to bring any chairs. You don't have to bring any tables. You don't have to bring any tents. So you just come in with your stuff. Don't say that you didn't get anything from your taxes. You are. That's what the elected officials are making sure that the tax money gets back to the small business, especially in view of what has happened with COVID. So our event will take place June 3rd at the Jackie Robinson Park and also June 17th on St. Nicholas Avenue times. St. Nicholas Avenue is from 12 to 6. Jackie Robinson is from 11 to 7 p.m. I will be sending you the, the PDF so that she can send it out to you all. Uh, mm -hmm. Tiffany, I know you were there last year. We'd love for you to get another free space and furniture this year as well. So we can do your business, okay, and everybody else. So CB9, you have, you get priority, okay? Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Troy. Thank Any you. questions? We'll put it on the website too. Yes, we'll thank, you. Yeah. Yes. thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Can I thank thank um, West Harlem Development Corporation and all the elected officials? Yeah. Right. Excellent. Thank you, Joyce. Okay. Oh, sorry. Next is Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance. Yes. Over here. In the all right. Good evening, everyone. Martin Collins bringing you greetings from the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, from the Uptown Arts Stroll Coordinator. We will have a pre stroll event on uh, Tuesday, May 9th, at the Harlem School of the Arts at 7 30 p.m. with uh, West Harlem resident and American jazz uh, composer Emmett Cohen and uh, Miguel Zainon, who will be performing that evening. It also serves as a fundraiser for the Harlem School of the Arts Summer Camp for Children, $10 a minimum suggested donation on Tuesday, May 9th. I wanted to show everybody our winner of the Uptown Art Stroll poster contest on the front cover of the Manhattan Times. I've also got copies of the oh. Times for everybody on the table over there. Uh, Devin White, she uh, won the poster contest. A nice story inside by Sherry Mazopchi from the Manhattan Times as well on this week's paper about the uh, winning artist and uh, the second and third place winner. The winner got 1500 and gets the front cover of all 25,000 guides will print. Uh, second prize is 750 and third prize 500. Uh, the Uptown Art Stroll opens on Thursday, June 1st from 6 to 8.30 p.m. in West Harlem at the Sugar Hill Museum on 155th Street and St. Nicholas Avenue. We invite you to join us on Thursday evening, June 1st. We will give away over 3,000 books to children uh, on Saturday, June 3rd from noon to 4 p.m. just at Pebbles Throne North at Mitchell Square Park on 166th Street and Broadway with the group behind the book and multiple community partners. I will email this flyer in English and Spanish to Yutha to share with the public. Uh, the Tonys are, of course, Sunday, June 11th at the United Palace. We hope and uh, we'll watch as uh, Washington Heights becomes a, a traffic jam as the Tonys come to our home. Uh, Tuesday, June 20th, uh, the Dorothy Maynard Singers will perform at the Harlem School of the Arts. It's a free concert. We invite you all to join us at 6.30 p.m. And also in Community Board 9 on Monday, June 26th, with our partners, the West Harlem Arts Alliance. We will have Latin Brazilian jazz with Annette Aguilar and the String Beans at Montefiore Park and 137th and Broadway. Finally, the Uptown Arts Stroll will close on Thursday, June 29th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the United Palace. 
we will have a, a multifaceted closing, which we're still working out the details with the palace on and the invite that brought us on um, from 6 to 9 p.m. on Thursday, June 29th. Finally, 52 women artists from Harlem, Washington Heights, Inwood are in this wonderful show called Women of the Heights, Women of Substance, Past, Present, and Future. Our gallery hours are Tuesday and Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. in the ground floor of the United Palace at 175th and Broadway. I will also email this to uh, the district manager, and there are cards on the table for everyone to bring. Thank you. A question for you. Yes. Very, very good. Though. Thank you. Thank you. Is the way we can get a digital copy of the front of that and put on our website? I will contact the editor, Deborah Lee Santos, tomorrow at the Manhattan Times and ask her. Like to put email that yes. to, uh, to people. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, Icon School of Medicine at, um, at Mount Sinai. Thank you. Is that person here? Yeah. This is. I, I'm here. Okay, um, very good. I'm going you. to start. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, I'm Dr. Sydney Hankerson. I am a, a psychiatrist and vice chair of community engagement at Mount Sinai. And I'm really proud to announce um, that on Saturday, May 13th, uh, we are going to be hosting um, at First Corinthian Baptist Church, uh, the first annual Hope in Harlem Conference. Uh, this is the conference flyer. Um, our keynote is going to be Trisha Hershey. She is the founder of the NAP Ministry. Um, she wrote a New York Times bestselling uh, book called Rest is Resistance, which really focuses on the importance of rest and mental health care uh, as a social justice issue for people of color. So the conference is going to be featuring Pastor Mike, Dr. Lena Green, who is the executive director of the Hope Center, uh, Dr. Ann Sullivan, Commissioner of, of um, Mental Health for the state. Uh, myself uh, is am speaking, uh, Dr. Shopa Tafik, who's a psychologist at Mount Sinai who specializes in working with youth. Um, Harlem native Sean Dove uh, is going to be speaking and talking about some of his um, youth uh, struggles with substance use. And then Dr. Corinne Glover, who is a, a expert and an adult psychiatrist with Montefiore in the Bronx. So we're also really excited to announce that um, Congressman Richie Torres just yesterday confirmed that he will be speaking and sharing his wellness journey. Um, and so this in-person conference, in-person conference is going to be from 10 to 1 at the church at FCBC. We're offering free continuing education credits for social workers, psychologists, and physicians. Immediately after the conference, we're gonna be blocking off 116th Street between Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard and Frederick Douglass and having a wellness fair. And so we really want this to be a family-wide event for kids to come out. We're gonna have face painting and balloons. We're gonna have Reiki healers. We're gonna have yoga. Uh, we're going to have insurance sign up so that people who are uninsured can get insurance. And the whole goal is really to, to you know, resist the culture of busyness that we find ourselves in as New Yorkers, to celebrate community and, and to honor heroes of hope. And so I, I I'll just briefly share our website. I would love support from the community board um, in identifying community organizations and, and, and individuals who did the Herculean tasks of providing mental health supports throughout the pandemic. And so this is our website, hopeinharlemconference.com. And you see the different sections here. And if you click on Heroes of Hope, um, you can nominate um, a hero of hope. So we wanna know about the barbers, the beauticians, the pastors, the organizations, who really are not the formal mental health providers that folks would go to, but the folks in our community that provide, you know, kind of non-traditional mental health services. And so um, this is the website, I'll put it in the chat. People can email me, I'll put my email in the chat, but we really want Harlem to come out and represent for this first conference. And it's open obviously to all boroughs. And our hope is that we will have, this will be an annual event and that we can replicate it and have hope in the Bronx, hope in Brooklyn, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Juan Colmenero. You have a question, Juan. 
Well, I just like to say that uh, uh, sleep and rest is so critical to humanity. Um, uh, I mean, just lack of sleep makes me be a mess in the morning. And working hard is very difficult when we don't sleep. So I want to thank you for that, uh, especially you know when it's noisy outside. It's very difficult to do that. But uh, reflecting on what you're saying, I remember going to the supermarket and how those supermarket workers were, in essence, hope uh, for us because they were there every day. And we appreciate them so little, but they had food for us and they never missed a day. And I just want to thank the people on 148th in St. Nicholas Avenue. They were always there for me. And they opened that door at seven in the morning and I went shopping and all the senior citizens went shopping and they kept everybody safe and calm. So I just want to thank you for your words and the work that you're doing. Uh, that's thank all. Bye-bye. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Caldwell, you have a... Yes, I have a statement uh, for Dr. Hanks. A... Dr. Hankers. I want to thank you very much for your efforts, uh, Dr. Hankerson, in addressing uh, the mental health issues in our community. I'm an associate minister of Convent Avenue Baptist Church as well. And uh, yes, this, mm -hmm. this pandemic was somewhat cumbersome for clergy. Uh, I, I'd like to have a chance to speak to you further concerning any assistance that you might offer our community within our churches. So I, I would like to I would like to leave you my email address uh, in the chat and would like to definitely have a chance to to discuss this further that we might communicate, especially being that you're going to be uh, first Corinthians as well. I'm sure convent would be interested in hosting your group. Great, thank you for that I'm comment. To. Thank you. Thank you. Ken Miles, you have a question? Um, it's it's a quick statement, but hey, Dr. Hankerson, hey, it's Ken. Ken Miles. I just wanted to formally thank you um, for our work together in uh, 2021 around Arise and working with youth in the community, your receptiveness, your responsiveness, and the way you've kind of continued to shepherd um, mental health and, and well-being initiatives and peer-led well-being initiatives in the community and really creating uh, more platforms for that to be shared more regularly uh, with our neighbors and with our community members and also uplifting uh, voices from the community that are doing that work non-traditionally. Also wanted to say, uh, Dr. Corinne is a friend and I'm really excited about how this event is coming together. So thank you for your stewardship. Great, thank you. Thank you for that, Kim. Laquita, you have a question? Yes, yes. I uh, also want to thank Dr. Hankerson and Dr. Tadig. They will both be featured at our May 1st Community Board 9 uh, Health and Environment Committee, where, of course, it won't be a full conference, but they will be featured speakers. So we'll get that um, email to the board um, a week before May 1st. So I guess that would be something like next week. So I thank you very much for coming to make your announcement. And we look forward to hearing from you further in more Great. detail. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, one more state. Sorry. Uh, hold on one second. Um, just one other issue. We might talking about a possible health fair somewhere down the line. I would love to have you attend mm -hmm. such an event that we might have to talk about issues that affect the community um, in this area in particular. So I'm just putting out an invitation early for that. I'd be happy to. Okay. Great, thank you. Next. I would like to just before you go on, Victor, if I may, uh, Dr. Okay. Hankerson, um, uh, I cannot reach you through that chat, but uh, if you could share an email address or something with me, Patricia Caldwell, I would I would definitely contact you. Sure, and I put my email in the chat, but it's just sydney.hankerson at mountsinai.org. Okay, send me. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great. Okay, next is Walter Alexander. 
Good evening, all. This is Walter T. Alexander. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. this straight once and for all. Uh, <laughs> your time up, son. <laughs> all right, Vic, you got me. All right, uh, myself and my co-chair, Carlton Davis, my uh, committee members, Patricia Caldwell, um, Lydia Gerson, and Arellis Mejia, we're, we're doing our initial senior uh, resource fair, May 2nd, uh, at the board office, 3291 Broadway, which is 133rd Street on the downtown side, right there by the bus stop. And um, from 11 a.m. to either two or three, depending how we stretch it out. Um, I would like, for, uh, one thing, we have to announce publicly that May is, I mean, April is senior month. That's you nowhere know, you hear about uh, Black Music Month, you hear about Black History, you hear about uh, all kinds of, but we don't hear that there's a, a April is Senior Month, so we got to get that out to the public. Um, I would like all the members who can, uh, can attend, please do so. Uh, I know it's in the daytime, which is difficult for the folks that are working, but uh, we can use a couple of hands to volunteer to do simple things like assist uh, uh, so the seniors and uh, we, we're going to be serving food. So I would like a couple of fo folks to serve food if, if you can. But it should be a great event. We got a lot of folks lined up. I had to stop inviting people because we started getting a lot of invitations. Uh, we have a few uh, community, uh, community organizations coming. A few politicians have confirmed. MTA, Verizon. Um, it should be a great event. It really should be a great event. And I hope that this is going to be an annual thing. And as uh, Victor said earlier, this is going to probably be the kickoff of all of the groups doing a, uh, a fair in the coming time, in the coming months. So please come out and support us. Um, I'm nervous about it, but I think we can pull it off. And so I can use all the help I can get. And thank you for the time. And I'd just like to add, I'd like to thank the CB9 staff who has been working tirelessly on this event. Madison. Whoa, oh, for show, for show. <laughs> <laughs> what date is that, Walter? May 2nd. May 2nd. It's, it would be in lieu of our normal uh, senior issues meeting. So it's going to be in person May 2nd at the board office, 3291, 133rd Street at Broadway on the downtown side of the number one train. Mm -hmm. Come all, come all are welcome. Okay, and we're looking for volunteers. I'll repeat that. We need help in everything, set up, breakdown, serving of food and facilitators. So if you please could uh, donate your time, we greatly appreciate it. And if I haven't said it, the, uh, the, st the assistant staff and the new staff has come aboard have been really, really, really great in, um, in helping in with all this endeavor. Thank you, uh, uh, Mar Mar Madison and Akil, and Yutha. Don't let me forget you. No Thank problem. you all. All right. Thank, Thank you, Walter T. Alexander. Yay, yay, yay. All right. Next one person, uh, Sierra Lopez. Is Sierra Lopez here sure. virtually or? Got it. Hold on. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Relax. Notification. Do you hear me? One new notification from Amazon Shopping. USB outlet plug has arrived. Yeah. Sierra, go ahead. Go ahead. My back is. <laughs> Sierra. Oh, sorry. It's Miss Lopez. Is it, is it Clara? Clara? I'm sorry. I thought it was Sierra. Clara Lopez. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Um, I am. I feel very, very bad in this community where we're living because uh, here in Broadway, in 139th Street. Um, 571 West 139th Street. The we have a, a restaurant um, and a bar, villa, villa, villa bar. Uh, they play music all night. We cannot rest. We can sleep. We don't have peace here, and we are senior. 
my husband and I, we suffer from depression, diabetes, um, uh, uh, anxiety, uh, authorized thyroid and high blood pressure and asthma. My husband have cancer. My husband have Parkinson. My husband has high blood pressure. And my husband is very sick. And we can rest here. I call the police. I call 311, the, the 311 number, but they don't do nothing. So I, I even planning to, to see what I'm going to do. Maybe we have to move or something. We've been here since 1976. 1996, pardon me. And it's getting bad around here. It's, before it was just the drug, now it's the immunity, the, the, the noise. We can, we can sleep, we can rest. And we feel very, very uh, depressed because nobody helped us on these problems. And that's what I want to express myself. We have a, a billiard bar in the 3428 Broadway down there. I sleep, I am in the second floor and they down there in the first floor. And we have the Picante restaurant. And also a parlor, beauty parlor. They stay up too late. And when I called, the last time I called the policeman on the 311, they said they can do nothing to go to court and to talk to the landlord. We do, we, did, we already talked to the, to the manager of my uh, landlord and they said they're gonna do something. I went to those places, especially to the Villar Bill, bar. I talked to them, I explained our, how we feel and they say they're gonna do something. They ha they haven't done nothing. Ms. Lopez, we are aware of this issue. We're working with a couple of different city agencies um, to rectify this. You know, it takes a little time, but we are um, aware of this. You could put your number um, in the chat. We'll reach directly out to you and, and speak to you about this. But we are aware of it, and we we have started working on it. And and That's Ms. Lopez, also, I'd like to add that there will be a hearing, uh, DEP, uh, Department of Environmental Protection, on April 25th. Uh, they do not issue any summonses or um, any other complaints regarding this establishment until after the hearing. That's what we were told. The police April, department- April 26th, 5th? 5th. And maybe 25th. It's on April 25th. 25th. Yeah, April 25th. I would just add, Ms. Lopez, that I know it feels like nothing can be done, but you should keep calling 311 311 because all of those calls, they give you a reference number. Those calls are going to come up in the hearing on April 25th, and they serve as documentation of when they are being too loud. So if you call 311 and they close the complaint and you still hear the noise for the billiards place, call 311 again and keep calling until you're just too tired to call anymore that night. But it serves as a paper trail of when they are being too loud. And I'm sorry this is taking much longer than it should to deal with this establishment but sometimes the city moves slowly and we are going to make sure that it gets dealt with. So um, uh, the 25th, uh, 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 where and uh, at uh, what time? Can they attend? I don't know. Can they attend the hearing? I'm not sure I can find out. We will find yeah. out. Do we have her email? We have a contact. Uh... Ms. Lopez, can you share your contact? Oh, yes. 
you can you can email me miss lopez i don't want you to give your private information publicly my email mm. address is it's e e prince prince at x at cb9m.org cb Nueve, nine. Nine. That. M. CB9M. CB9M as in Mary dot org. Oh, CB9. CB9M. Mm -hmm. Dot org. Dot org. I got it. Okay. It's in the chat if you could see the chat also. All right. Senor. All right. And, and your name is? Yusa Prince. It's her name. She's a district manager at Youth of Prince. Also have your neighbors call as well when the noise is very, very loud. Have everyone in the building call. The more people to call, the better records they have. All right? That's okay. 311. They 311. keep the record. Okay. Thanks for hearing me. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jane Arendelle and Walter T has their hand up. Jane, question? Is that a legacy hand, Jane? Walter, you have a question? Uh, I just want to be, thank you, Ms. Lopez, for bringing that to our attention. This is what we call a senior issue. Um, so anything that's going to be involved in upcoming, please leave us your information. Um, uh, I want to get with um, the <clears throat> regular community board members as well as our politicians to see if we can get some type of resolution because um, this this is just gonna be a problem. Yes, Thank I'm not even that. I'm not even scared to give my my, inform, my information. I just want peace. I have yes. a, a very sick husband. I am very sick too. My husband is seventy years old. I'm sixty, but very sick. And we, we just want peace. And we don't have the money to move to a a a, 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 a nice neighborhood or. A, a, a better neighborhood than this. We've been here for 30 years almost. Okay, we, we're gonna work with you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. The next person who submitted was Matt. Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, Matt. Okay. Matt, are you here? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, so I am. Uh, uh, I'm actually Clara's neighbors, and I know there are many other neighbors here uh, with me. So I want to address the same issue she's addressing, and uh, I want to add another thing. So the we we continually call the three one one, but every every time we call, and every, I, I I also downloaded the app, so which is very fast and easy. But I close my case every time without doing anything, and I close it after two minutes. Um, this is the first thing that I want to brought in. And the second thing that I want to raise is uh, last Saturday, uh, what happened, it was basically a rave party. And I also know that the board knew about it because we offered many information about it. And uh, I feel honestly embarrassed to say that you did nothing. So um, this is my main complaint that I'm, make, that I'm pretty sure my neighbors feel the same, the same way. Because I, I understand that I understand three one one, and and I understand that we keep that this is what we have to do, but at the same time, I need something quick. So I understand the long process, but at the same time, I need to sleep in the night. I'm a professional teacher. I teach every day at nine a.m., and I need to sleep. Matt, this is you, the Prince. I believe we spoke on the phone and we corresponded via email. Your request or your information was forwarded to the 3-0 precinct to Officer Mendez. We were told that a car would be sent on Saturday and a DEP couldn't send, they couldn't deploy any inspectors, but the 3-0 said that they would be uh, patrolling the area with their uh, devices to measure the decimals. What happened, I, I'm not sure. I've had a, a message into Officer Mendez I'm looking to get her response. I haven't received one as yet. Just trust me, no car showed up that night. And trust me, what happened last night was a rave 
party. I'm not, my unit is not even on the first floor. The whole building was shaking till 4, 5 a.m. Uh, you, you, the what is it on? What um, sector is that in the three? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's sector B yeah, or A, but I'll, I'll find out. Um, well, it's not be sector A. But however, I want to invite them to attend the community, community council. council meeting, which will hold on Thursday, next week, Thursday at seven o'clock uh, at the Mason's Lodge. Located at 155th Street, that lodge. I remember. Pencil. 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 454 West 155th Street. So, Matt, I don't know if you heard that, but we have here Joyce Adewume, who is the chair, president of the 30th Precinct Community Council. So, the precinct, the police precinct that covers the area is the 30 30th. And they have their community meeting next Thursday at 454 West 155th Street at what time? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Understood. And, so and I and I really appreciate everything you're doing, but I think that uh, my fellow tenants and I we need a short term like fix because we need to fix the issue as soon as possible. I understand it is a long process, but we also need to see something immediately. Well, I yeah, my. Matt, it, it's it, it is a, a long term process. We're trying to make it as quick as possible. It's not like they can come and put a padlock on the door. It has to go through a process. And this suggestion is where the precinct's going to be. You can come with your neighbors to talk about it to put more pressure on the precinct to respond. Right. Then at the DEP, we're going to find out if people can attend the DEP hearing. That would be another place you could go and speak your piece about what's going on. So unfortunately, you know, it is a process. Um, Victor, they they also they also may want to reach out to buildings and the fire department because a rain party is a fire. Mm. Sometimes they will shut it down if they go there. Mm. There's right. probably no entrances, no exits. I mean, every every space has a capacity, and I cannot imagine that party being at capacity. I can only see it being over capacity. So they may want to do that, try to reach out to True. take that avenue. Okay. The fire department will shut it. Okay. And, and what is the, did we ever ascertain what category liquor license that place has officially? Okay, I get mixed information on that. They say that they have a pending application mm -hmm. for alcohol, and then we found out they have an active application for where beer, wine, and cider. They have an active license or application? License. So, yeah, I, I mean, I've observed them selling brandy and tequila and other hard liquor there. I don't think they have a license for that, mm -hmm. and I think have we notified the SLA? Cora, well, we've been in contact with SLA. Cora Bell, the commanding officer of the 3 he's supposed to be requesting a meeting with the SLA chair. I haven't heard anything, but I will give the 3 a call tomorrow. Okay. But I know that's in the works. And the DA's office, who's on the line as well, has been working with us along with the mayor's office, DEP, and the buildings department, because we were told that the awning that uh, bars and billiards have up, that the telephone number is not a working number. And I was told that that's a violation. I have, I just looked it up, on-premise liquor is the license type and it's good until 4-30-2023. Okay. Oh, that's oh. Yeah, okay. Just saying. Oh, that's next week, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yes, Carolyn. That application has been denied by SLA. There is no application that they are, it is on pending, but it has been denied. Well, it sounds like we need to get some clarity directly from someone at SLA. Mm -hmm. because yeah, I, got that, I got that from SLA, and I also got it from the police department, is why I'm saying it. It was more I could add, but I don't want to do it on Zoom. Okay. But right. Matt, do we have your information so we can follow up? Yes, I will. No, but do we have Matt's information, contact information? 
Do you have the contacts of my other tenants? Yes. Okay. 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 That that's fine. All right. You want to adjust these things? I have my hand raised. Who's that? Me too. Me too. There's a there's a line for. Uh... <laughs> Yes, Ms. Powell, go ahead. Can we keep it short? We have quite a few I items. I will definitely keep it short. Uh, okay, for, this tenant, for these tenants in, within this building, I'd like to offer you just a little uh, hands-on that might be uh, might assist you in, in, in having better results as a result of the meetings. If, each, if you write down a two-sentence dialogue complaint to 311, and everybody says that same line. And you flood 311, where everybody in your building makes that same statement call to 311, each making sure they get their number, even 311 will get frustrated with you and, and insist that something be done. You have, there's a meeting I understand on the 25th, Barry. So therefore take three days and everybody call between the hours of six and nine. And each person, if you have a 40 something, 40 unit building, make, let everybody call three times. I'm sure that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. We used to call that a zap, a 311 zap, if oh, anyone remembers. Um, Juan Colmenares, thank you, Patricia. I'll be, I'll be brief. I'll be brief. Um, Matt and Ms. Clara Lopez, um, I wear earplugs, and I found that the silicone ones are really, are really good. And I also bought a, a very good set of Sony uh, noise-canceling headphones. Now, that doesn't solve your problem, but it helps. The second thing is you keep, you keep at it because something is going to happen. I know how you feel, Matt, because I've dealt with the same thing, but it's changing and something will happen. All right? Um, Thank you. The last thing, the last thing I want to say is the 30th precinct chooses what they choose to deal with. You can call them and they may choose to do it or they choose not to do it. Uh, one time I had a police uh, person tell me, why don't you move? If you are suffering, why don't you move? So we have to hold agencies accountable. Uh, everybody who doesn't do their job needs to be held to that. That's all I wanted to say, bye-bye. And Tiffany, do you wanna go? And you'll be the last one. You're muted, Tiffany. Sorry. Uh, you can speak with a housing lawyer about this for the exact language, but you have the right to, um, I think it's called the quiet enjoyment of your apartment, which means that the landlord is responsible for you being able to live in your space. And if that bar or establishment is a tenant of the landlord, then that's something you can also address with your landlord. Um, I found that some of these older windows are the single glass pane windows, which are horrible for mitigating noise. That's something that you can request to be replaced. So you would actually get new, brand new windows as part of this bargain as well. Um, and another thing that I would ask, and this is another piggybacking off of what Patricia was saying, if everyone demands actually that the tenant, meaning this establishment, um, they have better soundproofing acoustics, that would also help to mitigate the noise. So it, I actually put this in myself. Um, a friend had a leak in her ceiling, so we removed the, the entire ceiling in her living room. And I added, it's called rock wool. You can buy it, the landlord can buy it at Home Depot. It's a soundproofing foam that's also fireproof. So it has that double benefit. Um, but again, I forgive me for not remembering the exact phrase, but it's I think it's called the right to the quiet enjoyment of your space. And that is your landlord's responsibility. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Um, and thank don't you. move by the way, please don't move because I'm certain that your apartment is either rent is rent regulated and it will be pretty much impossible to find that sort of rent anywhere else in the city. So stay. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. We're going to end with that and go to our next public speaker, Natalie Smith. Are you here, Natalie? 
Hi, yes, I'm here. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, Excellent. clock is started. Three minutes. Thank you all for your Thank you all for your time. I am part of the same tenants group, so I just want to briefly emphasize a few points um, and then we'll use little of this time um, as possible. One being the noise is so severe that the building shakes. There's sound reverberating through the floor, so noise proofing um, isn't a valid option. Earplugs don't do a lot of work because we can literally feel the vibrations. Um, I also want to distinguish between the two sources of noise. So the billiard parlor is sending a very kind of strong reverberating bass as well as music that is the most distracting um, of the two, but there's also very loud music coming from Picante. I do think it's important to note that the billiard parlor is the the larger problem. And so if there's a, you know, one needs to be addressed first, that is um, a really significant problem, but both are um, interfering to use the, the legal term that Ms. Khan raised, interfering with our use and enjoyment of the property. Um, <clears throat> like this really does rise to the level of a nuisance under New York private nuisance law. Um, we don't want to have to move in that direction, but, um, would but this certainly does rise to the level of interfering with our ability to use the property and to sleep um i know that we have one or two more speakers from our unit who would like to speak and so i'll use less of this time um is it looks like the video is cut out is the audio yeah. still coming through to participants the audio yes. is coming through. Still still it's on the last two and, and it's, it's more the screen yeah. than the yeah. video feed itself uh, yeah. um I have a question though. How late does the picante music go? Routinely until three, four, five a.m. So it's the same schedule as the billiard parlor, um, and it's very, it's common for that for both the billiard parlor and picante to play music every night of the week, loudest on the weekends, and often it won't start until ten p.m. So it's a matter of the noise becoming egregiously louder as we go later and later into the evening, um, and usually again accompanied by building shaking reverberations. And the reverb is mostly from billiards. That is that is our impression. So I'm a, in a, a first floor apartment, so right above these establishments. We are able to feel um, more reverberations in the part of the apartment that is closer to the billiard parlor, less from Picante, but both we can feel the bass um, when only one of them is active. All right. I just want to add to for closing. Uh, Carolyn Thompson, co-chair of the Uniform Services, a transportation committee just informed me that the commanding officer Corabel is meeting with SLA tomorrow. And then we also got information that the 3 was in fact at the establishment on Saturday. Thank you. So um, thank you, Natalie. Sarah Williams is also up to speak. Is it about the same issue? Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, hear you. Hi, I'm also another resident. I okay. want to complain that the liquor license is not only something that the SLA needs to look into for the billiards, but it needs to be looked into Picante. Picante plays music until 4 a.m. as well. Their liquor license also needs to be reviewed and revoked as well. They play music until 4 a.m. and they are opened, uh, I don't know how a restaurant, turns into a club and is open till 3 a.m. If you're a restaurant, you don't operate till 3 a.m. But their liquor license also needs to be looked into, not just the billiards. They are both equally making building shaking noise. And I understand that you all are wanting us to put in 311 requests. We are doing that, but you all telling that to us over and over is a little frustrating when we are the ones sleeping through this or trying to sleep through this and we are looking for an immediate solution. I saw the police come by on Saturday. They got on their phones, their intercoms, and talked to someone and basically said, you need to talk to your landlord. Our landlord is not gonna do anything. They have the capability of pulling up to the establishment and telling the owner to turn off the music. That is the immediate response. That's the immediate response we're looking for you all to help us to get. The paperwork for the long-term solution, great. That's awesome. We're right there. But we need an immediate solution. And the immediate solution is the police telling them, turn off the music. The liquor license is a, is a long-term solution. This is extremely frustrating. But Mary, don't they have to have a cabaret license too? Not anymore. They got rid of the cabaret law. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I think that one of these will get resolved faster than the other. I suspect that the Conte can get resolved faster. Um, billiards is new for those who don't know. It opened during COVID and kind of slipped under the radar as far as I can tell. And it has been a problem essentially from the day it opened. Um, I mean, the mayor's office has been involved in this building for at least a year. Um, although it took them a while to find which building it was really in. Um, but unfortunately, I don't know if this has been made clear. We are a board of 50 volunteer individuals. We do our best to provide a forum for these complaints and to raise with the agencies. We will continue to follow up with the 30th precinct, um, but we cannot march in there and go down to the basement and flip the breaker switch and shut off the electricity. Um, we, we, we cannot provide you with an immediate solution, although Monica's solution for fire code is actually a really good and possibly immediate one. But what we can do is work with you to try to resolve this. And that does not help you tonight or the next night when you are trying to sleep and you cannot sleep because you have bad actors below you making too much noise. And I recognize that. And we understand that because not getting sleep destroys your health, it destroys your mood, destroys your ability to think straight. And, and we don't take that lightly, but we will be doing our best as volunteers to continue to try to provide both immediate and long-term solutions. But know that, you know, know that, know that we're here without much more power than you, but we're going to give you all the power we have to fix it. Mina had her hand up. You know why? Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, you, you said that really well, Barry, so I wasn't sure if I should interrupt. But um, our office is also made aware of this issue and also has been speaking with the 30th um, mayor's office, DP, et cetera. But um, I'm really happy that you all did come on the call. Um, I know I saw Todos Nosotros was on, so it was really good to hear from other um, neighbors. But I also, I don't know if you want to put in the Q&A. Of course, you don't need to put your unit number, but what buildings are impacted if you guys are representing the same building or both different buildings, that's also helpful. 3424 Broadway and 3428 Broadway, Manhattan, New York. 10031. And 571 West 139, is that on? It's the same building. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the residential entrance then. Okay, got it. Wait, that's not much. So, so the last um, entity for public session is Todos Nosotros. Is that as part of the same yeah. issue? Yeah. Is, um, is there anything else uh, uh, that you want to add? Todos Nosotros? Yes, yes there are thank people, you, thank you. There are people here that are paying $5,000 of rent. And that's not fair, not having, not having the peace to sleep and getting sick and they have to go to work. We, we, got, we got it, Clara, we hear you. We feel, well, we don't feel your pain in terms of not getting sleep from the noise, but we hear you. And we will work as was stated to try to remedy the um, problem as soon as possible. But Thank you. Whoever the yeah. month rent in that building should check their rent history because that rent is probably illegal. And if you go to justfix.org, it has instructions to request your rent history <laughs> and find out your, how much you're being illegally overcharged. Separate issue from Thank the Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> that is actually a great tip, and we are working on that. Um, so I'm yeah. going to be brief. Um, I'm, I'm in agreement a thousand percent with everything my residents are saying. We're all in this together. We're all trying to fight this together. Uh, the bad actors are both Picante and Billiards and Bar. You know, both are going till 4 a.m. What I'd like to, to touch on is what Tiffany was talking about with the peaceful environment, peaceful um, enjoyment of your apartment, uh, which also is a warrant of habitability clause in the lease. And I wanna, mm -hmm. I wanna read very quickly, uh, and I promise I won't take too much time, but I wanna read a, a excerpt of a letter that I wrote to people in Stellar Management, who is the landlord of this building. And 
I actually have not received a response to it. I actually wrote this letter to the co-founder of Stellar Manager um, Management, Mr. Larry Gluck, and he absolutely has disregarded this. Not one person in that building, in that management has replied. But here's that letter very quickly, and then I will yield the rest of my time. Dear Mr. Gluck, we write to you for your help in a matter we have been dealing with for, for well over a year now. Your commercial tenant located at 3428 Broadway, known as Solo Nosotros, AKA Billiards and Bar, has been making our lives miserable throughout much of the pandemic. What was once a quiet area with an occasional siren or dog barking is now a full-blown music thumping, intolerable nightclub environment. Us nearby residents are basically forced participants of this chaos being made to listen to this commotion all night long. We need sleep so that we can get up refreshed in the morning and we're not getting it. We're subjected every single night to loud music thanks to the inconsiderate owners and employees of this establishment. Our sincere request is as follows. Please either remove this business as one of your commercial tenants since they are not upholding the terms of their lease or if they're willing to soundproof every single nook and cranny of their space and remain closed until that work is fully completed and then submit to a noise inspection prior to reopening, that would also be an acceptable solution. The police have spoken to them multiple times. They're well aware of the harm they're causing us, especially to our many elderly residents, but they simply do not care. They continue to blast the music every single night as if they're totally unaware of how many people are being disturbed and how many lives are being destroyed due to a lack of sleep. We are no longer comfortable in our own homes. We know that seller management is an upstanding business looking out for everyday New Yorkers. Your motto is for everyone to live a stellar life. We are confident that you will take the appropriate actions to right this wrong and get us back to a peaceful life. Sincerely, todos nosotros. Not one person in seller has responded to this, but I wanted to put it out there for you guys to know what we've done and what we've tried to do. Okay, very good. Um, so I think we need to end this session because, excuse me? Yes. Okay, yeah, we need to end the public session. Um, Sorry. We have a lot of items on the agenda. D oh, yeah. Daria, is your comment related no. to this? Yes, to, and it's very- to, No, no, it's, no, we have to be out of this building by nine o'clock. We oh. have seven action items and we still have the elected officials, un unfortunately. Okay. Put, I was just going to tell the tenants to contact the DHCR for warrant of habitability. That's okay. it, Thank and you. I'll put Thank it in. The, I'll put it in the chat. Thank Great. you, Daria. All right, I have the following electeds in the audience: Stacy Marius Altella's office, Francisco Martinez, Sean Abreu's office, Nina Norwood Espiot's office, and Marion Hernandez or Daniel Donald's office. If I've missed anyone, please indicate it in the chat. So we'll start with Stacy from Al Taylor's office, followed by Francesco Martinez from Shauna Brayo's office. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, just want to make a brief announcement. We've had a few listening tours. I'm sorry, community liaison for the uh, assembly member, Al Taylor. We've had a few listening tours over the past two weeks that have gone very successful. The last two we did have to cancel because of the electeds being still in Albany. So we are going to reschedule uh, those meetings and let everyone know and blast them. Uh, the final... Um, message that I did have is the, we have a free community um, paper shred event that's gonna be this Saturday in the Esplanade Gardens at 2569 Adam Clayton Power Jr. Boulevard. And that's gonna be held from 10 to one on Saturday, April the 22nd. Um, everyone is free to come. It's a limit of three bags per person. And um, it is in collaboration with AARP. So that's all I have for now. Thank you. If any questions, I uh, left my information in the chat. Thank you, Ms. Marius. I, before we move on to Francesco, I just want to say for the board members, please review your action items now and write down any questions you may have so that we are prepared to go quickly through them once we are finished with the elected reports. Thank you, Francesco. Francesco Martinez. Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Francesco. I'm the district director for council member Sean Abreu's office. I uh, have a couple of updates. Um, so first I wanna start off with rat mitigation zones. 
Uh, Sean's bill establishing the rat mitigation zones in neighborhoods uh, with reports of higher rat infestations uh, have taken effect in conjunction with our legislation that changed waste setout times. Uh, we are officially taking the offensive in the war on rats, and I'm proud to share that Harlem is uh, designated as a mitigation zone. Uh, it will receive the first round of additional in, uh, investment, oversight, and analysis from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene uh, to tackle the root causes of this crisis once and for all. The city is currently investing uh, 3.5 million into Harlem alone for rodent reduction efforts. Um, and this is huge for Harlem. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, for second right to counsel, um, fully funding the right to counsel and empowering tenants to ex exercise their rights has been a lifelong fight for Sean. Our districts has the highest rates of eviction in the entire city. And tenants have repeatedly expressed to our office that they are not able to obtain legal representation in housing court because legal aid services and housing attorneys simply cannot take on any more cases. Uh, we have not only undermined, uh, undermined our right to counsel law, we have inflamed an, an eviction and homelessness crisis of historic proportions. Uh, the cost of the right to counsel is significantly less than the cost of maintaining and continuously pouring money into our overburdened, overburdened shelter system. A responsible budget must fund the right to counsel and make the promise of legal representation a reality. Uh, Sean is currently working closely with uh, Borough President Levine on this issue. Uh, Earth Day is on Saturday, and, um, and but while this week gets outsized attention, the fight to protect our planet from the damaging effects of climate change is a daily battle. On Saturday, Sean is hosting a community cleanup event in Washington Heights with Congressman Espaillat, a Broadway malls in the Community League of the Heights. Uh, I hope to see some of you guys there at 157th Street at noon, from noon to 2 p.m. Um, the Cannabis Forum, in partnership with CB9 and uh, Borough President uh, Levine, um, Sean is participating in the first ever Community Cannabis Forum, participated, sorry, and he spoke with uh, Dr. Rachel Knox, a, a cannabis and health equity specialist, and helping to stigmatize cannabis and leveraging the plant for health, uh, healing, and community uh, economic power. Uh, lastly, uh, last two things, um, size discrimination. Uh, millions are impacted by size discrimination. Uh, kids are commonly bullied for their height. Heavier women get paid less than their skinnier colleagues and people are with unconventional bodies are even denied life-saving medical treatment. Currently only two states and a handful of cities have banned discrimination on the basis of height and weight. This is a civil rights issue and New York City needs to be leading from out front. Uh, Sean is thrilled to be spearheading the fight to outlaw size discrimination in New York City public accommodations, housing and employment. And we look forward to this legislation passing in the near future. Uh, as far as the city, uh, as far as office visibility uh, that was brought up in previous meetings uh, by Victor and some constituents, we are near completion of a buzzer system to ameliorate visibility or open close concerns. Um, and just to be clear, we're always open, but we want to make it uh, very clear that folks are welcome to come in. Um, and lastly, uh, I want to say, I want to remind folks to continue to reach out to me directly and my team. Uh, feel free to call our office for constituent concerns. A few folks have reached out to me uh, since I've mentioned these things in the previous meetings. Um, and we've been able to find solutions and or connect folks to resources and provide guidance. Um, and also, just one more thing, sorry, um, about the um, noise issue that was recently highlighted. I. I'm going to be reaching out to the police commissioner's office. Um, they've been a great asset for us in holding these precincts accountable. Um, so I will be uh, be part of those efforts uh, tomorrow and in the and beginning of next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Nina Norwood, SBOT's office. And uh, I appreciate the updates, but given that we do have a hard time stop on the uh, room, if we can keep them as concise as possible. And if you have events, you can maybe just say them and put the details in the chat. Yes, yes, thank you very much, Barry. Can everybody hear me clearly? Yes. 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 All right, great. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. I'll try to move through mine as quickly as possible. Um, firstly, I wanna mention 
the um, annual arts, uh, congressional arts competition um, that is in full swing uh, throughout the 13th uh, congressional district. So the congressman is accepting the submissions. Um, so the deadline for that will be April the 28th. We are accepting those entries from high school students throughout the district, getting the opportunity to get their artwork displayed in Washington, D.C. and in the congressman's congressional offices, both in D.C. and in the district offices. So we wish our students the best of luck in that regard. Um, I also want to mention uh, it now is that time the congressman is kicking off his coffees with your congressman. Um, so now the weather is getting nice. We're able to be outside. The congressman, of course, wants to engage with people throughout the community. So um, last year we started in the northern part of the district and worked our way down. This year we're going to do it in the opposite, starting in the lower part of the district and working our way up. The first coffee just passed. That was in East Harlem. So the next one is scheduled for May 6th, which will be in West Harlem. But once that flyer is available, you know, we'll absolutely share that with the board. Um, I also want to mention that the congressman also hosted a NYCHA meeting with the NYCHA TA presidents throughout the district. He was also joined by NYCHA CEO interim um, and their representatives to continue to address a lot of the conditions and things that residences are continuing to complain about in our NYCHA developments throughout the district. Um, also, we want to thank everyone who took advantage of appropriations funding this year. Um, we know it was a tight time frame. We didn't care for it either, but the congressman wanted to get it out. We got it out fast and we were help, able to help as many as we could organizations throughout the district with the time frame um, that we had. And lastly, um, the congressman also attended an uh, EPA meeting um, in Riverbank Park. And he was joined by EPA Administrator Mr. Michael Regan and also with WE Act and mm -hmm. Senator Chuck Schumer's office. So that was who continued to address the environmental concerns in that area. So that will be the conclusion of my report. I wanted to wrap that up very quickly. So thank you very much, Barry and Yutha and the board. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Marion Marian Hernandez, Daniel Donald's office. Hi, can you see me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Um, we can oh, hear you. Okay, awesome. Um, hi, from Assemblyman O'Donnell's office, community liaison. I just have a few updates um, regarding Albany updates. Um, the extender, another extender was passed today, and this will go on till Monday. So hopefully, we hope to have a budget soon, but that will continue. The IRC voted for, um, voted on, and released the uh, 2023 Assembly plan. So District 69 remains pretty much the same. So if you're in our district, chances are you uh, are still in our district for the new plans, uh, but that will be voted on shortly. Um, regarding events, uh, we hope to have another shredding event in June. Our last one uh, was very successful. Thank you to all to who came and stopped by. Um, the Upper West Side Open Hearts organization will have an event this Saturday. It's a free store where they will offer uh, free resources to anyone who needs sanitary supplies, um, any sort of resources I can add in the chat. Uh, but that'll be this Saturday, April 22nd from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Church of St. Paul in St. Andrew. Um, and I just wanted to add this last event, which is the Japan Parade. This is their second uh, annual parade that they will be hosting. Uh, they will be hosting this event, or the parade will go from 81st Street along Central Park West all the way down to 67th Street, also along along Central Park West, um, but they will be hosting this parade um, in hopes to raise funds for the victims of the Turkey and Syrian, uh, the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, as well as the victims of the of the war in Ukraine. Um, and that will be Saturday, May 13th from 1 to 3.30, but I will add that and share the flyers with um, Yutha. Um, if you have any questions, I'll have my information in the chat, but that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you Next speaker is Somali Green from Christian Jordan Richardson's office. Hi, Community Board 9. Hi, everyone in the meeting today. Um, I'll make it super brief. The events that we have coming up is our State of the District on Housing, just to hear about the developments that the Councilwoman has supported as well as the ones that we want to keep our eye on. If you have any comments about what is going on in District 9 regarding housing, I suggest that you attend that. That is on May 7th, so that is early next month. We also have PSPNY, Parents Supporting Parents, the Power Hour for Enacting Change via Legislation event that is um, registered to attend and 
It is the councilwoman partnering with the nonprofit organization, Parents Supporting Parents, and we're trying to pass some legislation that can hopefully bring funding and resources to youth programs in the community. We will be at Harlem Grown's Earth Day event on Saturday, April 22nd. It's going to be Earth Day. We'll be at the 134th Street, I believe, um, Community Garden. I uh, hope to see you there. Our participatory budget is still open. We had both info sessions already, one just passed. But if you'd like to submit any more commentary or thoughts on what we should put in our budget, please fill that out. I'll add it to the chat. I'd also like to add really quickly to the people that have the uh, reports of the noise from, I think it's Picante and the Billards. I really, I know that, you know, you don't want to hear file more paperwork, but I really suggest filing harassment reports and keeping copy of those. This is something that we recommend on all fronts. If you feel like your management is ignoring, especially tenant to tenant, if you feel like management is ignoring the fact that another tenant is in violation of your lease, then that is impacting your own um, ability and your quality of life, then I highly suggest that and then bring it to the office and then we can escalate that. Unfortunately, the next step to escalation is um, a class action lawsuit and it is very hard to find pro bono legal representation, but if you need help with that or you need access to those forms, I open my email in the chat and I can definitely send those out. Other than that, the Jackie Robinson event was great. It coincided with Jackie Robinson's first kickoff day, which was April 15th, 1960. Nope, it's a little earlier. It's, I think it's like 1950 something. But that was great. It was great to march with the borough president and Keith Sutton James. And yeah, that is it from the office. If you have any questions uh, about general things, I'll take them now. But if you'd like my email, I can put that in the chat. Yes, please. Yes, please. Questions in the chat, please. I, I have one <laughs> very quick question for Francesco um, from Shauna Brave's office. If, if you're still on. Francesco? Yes, right. he's still here. But he he's new. All right. I, 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 if we can ask in the chat, is Sean Abreu's office doing the budgeting? I was going to ask. Yeah. I've, um, I'll put yeah. The, Do we have Justin or Ellie on? Hmm. Youth, is there any other elected that we have to call? No, we don't have any other electives. We could start on the action items. Oh. The first being HPD yep. grant so, program revisions. So in the time, I just want to let everyone know the committee voted unanimously in support of this reso. And Tiffany did an excellent job putting this reso together. I assume you've all read it and seen her beautiful data and the work that she did. I would ask Tiffany perhaps to read just the result clauses, which are very short. So that you understand what it is briefly, mm -hmm. and then we will vote. Okay. Um, so, actually, it's not okay if I just say one last thing to Clara and todos nosotros. Another option is it's already April twentieth. Tiffany, I, Tiffany, to cut you off. We're we'll getting a signal. We're going to have to leave here yeah, shortly. Put it, put it so put it in the chat. Thank you. Rent strike. Rent strike, get all your neighbors together and withhold rent. That's it. That was what I was going to say. Um, okay. In a nutshell, housing has been identified as one of the most important issues in the district. Uh, there is a grant program that HPD offers. It is funded by HUD. It is the Home First Down Payment Assistance Program because down payments have been identified as being the biggest barrier to home and access, um, home ownership access. Um, this is supposedly uh, financial, I'm sorry, Athena Moore mentioned it earlier today, Financial Literacy Month. Well, guess what? Home ownership is one of the biggest ways that the middle class builds equity. Um, I'm not gonna go into all the data. You can see it here. Um, you know, New York City has one of the highest wealth gaps in the entire union. Uh, people who own, own their homes have on average, a much higher uh, net worth. It's about $336,000 compared to renters who have only about $5,700 as a net worth. Uh, so 
we need to support this. We need to ensure that people who are applying for this grant program are actually able to successfully be awarded the grant. Currently, applications take four to six months to process. That is basically pricing, putting, shutting people out. Because again, Martin Luther King said, justice delayed is justice denied. An application for a grant program delayed is essentially an application rejected. And now more than ever, we need to support the middle class, especially people in our community to become homeowners. Uh, and to wrap it up, like I said, just go to resolve, we need to wrap up. We still have- So what I'm up. asking for is that number one, so the two asks, two asks, we want the application duration to be capped at one month. These are very simple paperwork, bank statements, tax returns. It shouldn't take four to six months to process these applications. One month is the cap. And for applicants who've already submitted their application, if they must go to closing, HPD should not reject or disqualify them as a result. Last thing, the application fee is $850. This is supposed to be for low and moderate income applicants, and that is exorbitant. That's it, thank you. All right. Vote Thank for you. a vote. Okay, Member Dula has requested unanimous consent. Is there a second? Second. I second, second. that. Unanimous all, consent. All those, who are, all those who are opposed to this resolution speak now. Going once, going twice. The measure has been adopted by unanimous consent. Thank the you. next action item is the reso regarding cannabis state licensing and permit committees. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Harlem Walk. Harlem Walk. Oh, sorry. Harlem Walk of Fame. Harlem Walk of Fame. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's... Of honor. Unanimous consent. Member the... Dula has requested unanimous consent on the Second. Honor. It's been seconded by member so, Alexander. So if anyone is opposed to this letter, which I asked you to read before the electors began, please speak okay. now. Going once, going twice. All right, the letter has been passed by unanimous consent. Next Thank is- Thank you, everyone. We're skipping. Oh, we're skipping the, so, sorry. We'll yes. go to it next month. Okay, reso number three has been delayed to put on the table till next month. Next is a letter of support regarding 200 Convent Avenue, City College of New York, Wingate Hall, LPC docket number 1933564. Who's addressing it? Unanimous consent. Member Dula has requested Second. unanimous consent. Thank it's very. Yes. Mary, I'm sorry, this is Liz. Um, I just have a friendly amendment before, before we pass this by unanimous consent. Member Whitekis is proposing a friendly amendment. What is your friendly amendment? In the third paragraph, there the word more should be stricken. Uh, third paragraph, letter of support, cannabis. The, the, the design is aesthetically and historically is more appropriate. More should be um, crossed out. Heather, is that, a, is that accepted as a friendly amendment? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Can I suggest another friendly amendment? Kat, what is your friendly amendment? Yes, I was looking. I did read the letter, and I noticed that um, Ziad Ramadan is identified as the interim executive director. His title is executive director. I don't think this is the right action item. This is an LPC item for City College. Well, you, are you talking about the CCs, Pat? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm yes. talking about the for 200 Convent okay. Avenue. Yes, yes, yes. You are correct in the. All right. Um, I, I also added another amendment to this. I also included that the permit was also issued for this um, March 7th. All right. The permit okay. was issued on March 7th. Got it. Heather, so you could make the amendments and send the corrected version to us? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay, so this, so, so that would be in the first paragraph after the last sentence, just acknowledging that the permit was issued March 7th, 2019, which is in fact also listed above the Dear Commissioner Carroll line. Are there any other friendly amendments to this or proposed amendments? Any discussion, debate? All right, I believe. Okay, well now Member Mortensen is requesting unanimous consent. Second. Uh, second. 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 All those in favor 
I'm sorry, anyone opposed to passing this letter of support as amended by unanimous consent, please speak now. Going once, going twice. The letter of support as amended is passed by unanimous consent. The next is a letter of support regarding good vibes in the park by IO in motion. Heather, I believe this is also out of your committee. Unanimous consent. Member Ottawa may request unanimous Second. Second. Member Edwards, is anyone opposed to passing this letter of support? Going once. There are all sorts of new friendly amendments, but it doesn't change the content. All right. Okay, well, and I'm sorry to be, but I'm seeing a, with this also, Ziad Ramadan is in is identified as interim executive director, and he's the yeah. executive director. So that's another friendly amendment. It will be correct. If we do thank you those before they go out. Yes. Okay. Um, Heather, I'll give you the update in this thing. Yeah. Uh, are there any objections to passing this letter of support by unanimous consent? Going once, going twice. All right, the letter passes by unanimous consent. The next action item is a letter of support regarding 340B funding, which we are surprisingly listed as the first signatory on that letter. Um, what what did this come out of? Health and environment? Yes. Yes, yes health and environment to uh, hold on to the, uh, to keep from having a $24 million loss. Uh, and defunding of uh, organizations uh, in communities of color and LGBTQ and people without uh, the care they need deserve and respect. They, you know, what you're trying to maintain that uh, safety net. Thank Thank you. you. Unanimous consent. Member, member, second. Second. Unanimous consent. Member Hardiman has seconded. Is anyone second. opposed? Is anyone opposed to this letter of support on 340B funding? We are actually ratifying this action by the executive committee, actually. Um, I'll note that. But is anyone opposed to this ratification of this letter of support? Going once, going twice. The ratification passes by unanimous support. The last action item of, is um, a reso regarding amendment of Manhattan Community Board 9 bylaws to permit electronic voting. Um, unanimous consent. Well, Second. Second. <laughs> Second. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. <laughs> okay, Brad. <laughs> I mentioned it earlier, but there are no changes from the amendment that we did back in right. 2021. Oh, okay, okay. So this is the same process that we used in 2021. Right. right. Same process is just coming from a different source with the mayor. Okay. Yeah. Instead of the governor. Yeah, All right. Victor, question unanimous consent. Is there a second? Second. 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 By everybody. Yeah. Paul, <laughs> Uh, if anyone is opposed to passing these amended bylaws to remind us to once again vote by electronic voting, please speak now. Going once, going twice. All right, it passes by unanimous consent. Is there any old business? No. Is there uh, new business? There is new business. Yes. Um, so uh, Reverend Morgan Thomas's term on UMass is up. She is up for reappointment by the board to a second and final term. Is that correct, Yutha? Yes. 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 Um, I would argue she's done a very meritorious job. Mm -hmm. If I were allowed to argue. Um, does anyone have any discussion of this action item? No, you can't. Well, we have to have Hold on. We need to Definitely unanimous consent. For sure, for sure. Member Mortensen is proposing the reappointment of Reverend Morgan Thomas okay. to the U.S. Board as the Community Board 9 designee. Is there a second? Second. 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 Daria Hardiman. Now, Monica, you may request. <laughs> I, I now request a unanimous consent. Second. Second. Oh. Reverend Dula has requested unanimous consent. Reverend Caldwell has seconded. If anyone is opposed to the reappointment or redesignation of Reverend Morgan Thomas as Community Board 9 designee to UMS Board, speak now. Going once, going twice. Reverend Morgan Thomas has been reappointed. We maybe should have asked if she wanted Yay, to Yay, congratulations. Ooh. All right. And those members <laughs> present, if you could sign your voting sheet and make sure you leave yes. it with us before you leave. Thank also, you. 
I will just say very briefly while we wrap up, I apologize for my tardiness. I was one of the panelists on the tenant interim lease town hall. I discovered we had another building in Till. 4850 Convent Avenue is in Till. Um, so we've got more work to do, but HPP was there and they were uncomfortable as they should be. Um, but these buildings have to be given to the shareholders, tenants who are ought to become shareholders. Um, I will leave it at that. Fair. You know, if these buildings are in trouble, right? HDFCs, I don't know. Are distressed HDFCs? Yeah. On that Does list. that include Agnes and our um, mm -hmm. and our court? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to, uh, so we need to, so we need to adjourn. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, so is there a motion to adjourn? Someone move, move by choice. Second. Second. You're not a concern. <laughs> All those in <laughs> say aye. <laughs> Meeting is adjourned at 9 12 p.m. The eyes have it. Good night. Have a good night, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. More people in person next month. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, we'll be at uh, Columbia. Oh. The forum. Oh. 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 Oh.